Hello, I welcome all of you on your own channel. That's Mudabir's Biology Club. You are watching Mudabir's Biology Club, and I'm Mudabir Qureshi. Today we will discuss a new topic that is the concept of lung fissures. So, in this lecture, we will focus about lung fissures. What are lung fissures, and how they differ from the general bony fissures, and what is their importance. Now, lung fissures, you will see. Lung fishes are when you study them, they are associated uh, with the class Osteichthyes of the fishes. Osteichthyes are the bony fishes, and these fishes show a general resemblance. These lung fishes show a general resemblance with other bony fishes. Uh, they resemble in appearance with the bony fishes. For example, uh, this is a, a general uh, drawing of the bony fish. You will see. In the, uh, first of all, we will try to understand the general features of the bony fish, and after that, we will see how the lung fishes differ from the general bony fishes. So, this is the general uh, uh, body structure of the um, bony fish. Uh, these are the dermal scales. These dermal scales are also present in case of the lung fishes, and uh, these are the uh, these are uh, this is median dorsal fin. Uh, this is caudal fin. Uh, it is anal fin. These are pelvic fins. These are pectoral fins. All these fins are also present in case of the uh, these uh, lung fishes. And uh, these are gills. These gills are also present in the lung fish. So in the general morphological features, the lung fishes resemble with that of the uh, these uh, uh, bony fishes. But where lies the difference? The difference is that in bony fishes, you will see there is present a structure uh, which we call as the swim bladder. This is the swim bladder over here. You can <coughs> note say it. This structure over here. Uh, this structure. This is the swim bladder in case of the bony fishes. But you will see this swim bladder, which is present in the bony fishes, it has got modified into lungs in case of these lung fishes. So this is the first difference. So we say that this uh, in this area you are seeing this. Swim bladder. The swim bladder, in case of the lung fishes, has got modified into a lung. It is the unique feature of these fishes. And after that, there are some other differences. Like you will see, uh, there is presence of internal nares over here. I will uh, say you these. These are the internal internal nares. These are the internal nares. Uh, these are also known as cone. C H O N E. Cone. So these are the internal nares, or we call them as the cone, and it is the feature which differs of these lung fishes from these general bony fishes. And this feature, presence of internal cone or internal nares, it resembles with that of the amphibians. And this uh, swim bladder, which is present in the general bony fishes, it has got modified into the lungs, and it also resembles with the amphibians. It's an amphibian feature. So. Furthermore, when you will see about the structure of the heart, you will see the piscine heart is like this. The heart of the fishes is like this. This is the auricle and this is the ventricle. There is simple two-chambered heart in case of the fishes. But when you see in these lung fishes, there is uh, imperfectly divided. Uh, there is imperfectly divided auricular structure. This is the imperfectly divided auricular structure. Means the heart is not three chambered, but it tends to move towards the three chambered condition. That's why we call them the heart of the lung fishes imperfectly divided three chambered. The heart of the piscine general fishes is two chambered. This is the auricle. This is over here. This is the auricle. This is the ventricle. The piscine heart is only two chambered. But you will see in case of these uh, lung fishes, this is ventricle. And this is auricle. This auricle shows imperfect division, means it tends to show resemblance with that of the heart of the amphibians. Remember, the heart of the amphibians has two auricles and one ventricle. It is three chambered, but that of lungfish is not three chambered, but it tends to be to move towards the three chambered condition. In other words, we say that when we study the anatomy of heart in case of the lungfishes, it shows a transition from that of the piscine heart to the uh, what we call as the <coughs> amphibian heart, although neither it is perfectly piscine heart, neither it is perfectly amphibian heart. It is a transitory stage between the piscine heart and the amphibian heart. So these are the general features of the lungfishes. So again, to remember that in lungfishes, 
the swimming bladder of the ostichthys has got modified into the lung and there is presence of the internal areas are cone and there is heart with imperfectly divided uh, auriculus it is a transitory stage between the heart of the fishes and that of the amphibians now we shall see there are three main surviving genera of the lung fishes that is the neoceratodus one is known as the neoceratodus neoceratodus sometimes you are asked in your neat examination the common names of these fishes neoceratodus is known as the australian australian lungfish australian lungfish it is the australian lungfish then there is another type of the uh, lungfish which we call as the protopterus protopterus this is the protopterus it is also known as the african lungfish african lungfish and after that you see then uh, there is a lepidosiren this is known as the american lungfish it is known as american lungfish american lungfish so these are the three surviving genera of the lungfishes so again i will repeat when we studied the features of the lungfishes they show some characters of the fishes and whereas they show some other characters of the amphibians like the presence of the lungs and the presence of internal nares and imperfectly divided auricle these are the features of the lung fishes which resemble with that of the amphibians so we conclude that these <coughs> fishes that is the lung fishes they are uh, this connecting links between the fishes and amphibians as they show some characters of the fishes whereas they show some other characters of the amphibians by studying this we conclude that basically amphibians might have originated or they might have evolved from some pisan or from some uh, fish ancestors hope that you have understood uh, what are lung fishes and what is their importance for other lectures do subscribe mudabbir's biology club thank you for watching